I don't want to spoil it yet. I'm having too much fun. <laughs> Who wants to read verse 30? Sister Becky. <clears throat> when I was informed of a plot to be carried out against the man, I sent him to you at once. I also ordered his accusers to present to you their case against him. All right, so when he found out that there was a plot against him, he told the accusers, now you're going to have to go to the government and plead your case. Now, and we're supposed to submit to the government unless it goes against the Word of God, correct? And uh, so even here, and the Bible says, and this is something God taught me after I came back. I had a few issues in this area that he had to line out in me. The Bible says his scales is even, his way is just. But so many times when we start dealing with these kind of things, we have a hard time believing that. Especially when we're, when we're dealing with the government. Mm -hmm. But if God is over all authority, the Bible says the hands of the king are in God's hand and turns them whichever so way if he will, that we have to believe if we're following him, if we're right standing with him, that he really is going to, Romans 8, 28 will come to pass and all things work together for good that love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. So, I really believe, and it's important in this day and time we're living in, to see how Paul's even dealing with corrupt government. Are y'all seeing that? All right. Verse 31. Who wants to read? Sister Heather. Then the soldiers, as it was, commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to and to Petrus. Yeah. <laughs> Why did, what? Well, here's a silly question. Why did they bring him by night? So they would be caught? Do you think they believe that they really want to kill Paul? Yeah. Good. That's all I need. It was a, I really wasn't setting you up for nothing. <coughs> Verse 32. He wants to read. Brother George. Believing. Uh, I'm sorry, but the next day, uh, leaving the horsemen to go on with them, they returned to barracks. Amen. And on the morrow, they left the horsemen to go away and returned to the castle, the barracks. And who, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. Now, Paul is before the governor, and now he's going to have to. Wasn't it prophesied that he was going to be doing these things? Mm -hmm. He said he would go to Judea and then to Rome. Yeah, and it, and it said that he would have to stand before people in authority. Now, I've. The Holy Spirit, you're about to. I've had prophesied over me that I'm going to. Some of you are in church, so I can. Nobody wants to live where I'm going to be dealing with people in authority and all those kind of things. And sometimes when the Holy Spirit speaks those things, if you're not, if you like to the the, bite of the, the bait of the Satan, he'll use that spirit of pride come in and, oh, I'm going to speak to these people. I bet you this isn't how Paul maybe he envisioned at first that he was going to be going to talk to these folks. Yeah. <laughs> but do you notice how? He's still obedient to what God's asking him to do. You know, if God told you that you're going to go, I want to send you to talk to President Obama, you know, well, you might get a full seat, full seat with him, but not the way you intended. That's this free. I'm just pulling some things out tonight. Are you all with me? Because it doesn't always go the way... In, in American Christianity, we've got everything worked down to a nice little science. And when it doesn't go the way we think, we'll become discouraged and throw it out. And when we look at the, the apostles and the things they walked through following God, it was always good and God always did what he said. But they quit trying to tell God how to do it. They quit trying to put God in a box for it. You know, if that had been some of us, well, I'm going to the diggers, but I'm not going this way. I'm not going all bound up in cuffs. That's free. Let's go on. Who wants to read next? Sister Dick. Okay, I forgot which one verse we're on. 34. The governor read the letter and asked what province he was from. Learning that he was from Sicilia, he said, I will hear your case when your accusers get here. 
Then he ordered that Paul be kept under guard in Herod's palace. All right, so uh, anybody have any idea why it mattered where he was from? We'll start with the basics and work our way from there. I don't know who jurisdiction Paul was from. All right. Very true. See if he had authority to, to do anything with him. Anybody else? See if I know where Sisa Kalika is? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it's the maritime province in the southeast of Asia Minor. Its capital was Tarsus. Anybody think that's any reasons for that? That's where Paul is from. And that's all he's confirming. That's what he said. Paul from Tarsus. So now we. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? No. Who is he? I'm just making it's Bible study, right? Yes. Do they have any entitlements to go back and try this whole province? We'll see. Sister Bonnie. Can verify his Roman citizenship? Verify his Roman citizenship. That's true. That is very true. That is what it did. But I made you all dig tonight since I'm out about out of time. I do got some good nuggets coming. Just hold on with me. Verse 35. Who wants to read? Sister Rebecca. He said, I will hear you when your accusers also have come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's praetorium. Yeah, and it's also that breaks down to Herod's judgment hall. It also breaks down to the halls of justice which is a really nice way of saying Herod's prison where they were held in the meantime. So, he came in. He said, God, so God's using... Now, I thought he was getting sent to witness, like going to Rome to be somebody. That's what his destiny was, right? And now, he's sitting in Herod's jail, waiting on his accusers to take their own sweet time to come blasting where would your faith level be about right now <laughs> but when we're talking about ch chasing after our destiny shouldn't we really be looking at the scripture of people that reach theirs amen amen I mean, Paul reached his, amen. Now, he's hanging out in the jail cell, waiting on a bunch of guys to come and pass judgment on him. Or try to. Amen. Verse 24. Who wants to read? Brother Josh. Okay, and after five days, I'm not going to say that word. And I the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullius who informed the governor against Paul. Okay, well, this, that's the first one. So, <laughs> after five days, now, was this a long journey? Yes. Well, how long did it take Paul to get there? Overnight. Overnight. <laughs> how long did it take these jokers to show up? Five days. Five days. You ever heard of trying to get your story together? Yeah. <laughs> you think that's maybe what was going on? Yeah. And then this uh, this orator, that's a, that's, a, that's a biblical name for slick lawyer. A slick Roman lawyer. That's what that means. Ones that knew, one that knew the Roman laws because the, the Jews didn't know the Roman laws. But this guy did. 
So he was like hiring their slick Roman lawyer to come show up to, to press Paul. And he, because he knew all the ins and outs, and he'd be able to twist the things just how they wanted. So they went and got him, and uh, that's what he was for. And uh, then they, and they tried to inform the governor against Paul. So not only they didn't even come to make judgment themselves, they even brought in a, what they thought was going to be their ace card, this slick, you know, snake salesman lawyer. Let's just look at it how it is, and uh, to come and pass judgment against Paul. Now, you know, if I, Lord forbid, but if I ever have to be in one of these situations, I don't know about you, but I'm already starting to gain a little confidence that I might not be the first one that the enemy's tried to use that tool against. Amen. Are y'all with me? Verse 2, who wants to read? Sister Heather. When he was called for, Tertullius began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto his na this nation by the providence. Now here's the snake salesman, and when he began to accuse, he started his whole thing blowing smoke up the governor's hind end. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, that's good here, Billy. It's all right. <laughs> We're streaming it. I'll have to eat it forever. I'll be getting a phone call tomorrow or tonight. <laughs> Pastor, did you say what? <laughs> but that's what this guy was doing, wasn't he? He was just coming in, making this guy feel good. Now, how many times have you all been sitting there while your accuser Come on, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The principal, your accusers, been using someone else, and they're they're blowing smoke up this other person's hind end. You're just having to sit there and take it. And the whole time you're chewing your tongue off, wanting to go. I want to tell you what they're doing. But aren't you so glad that God knew we'd have times like that? He left the illustration in here so he so we could see how we're supposed to handle it. Are you all with me now? Amen. And uh, so. So verse 3. Who wants to read verse 3? <coughs> Sister Rebecca. We accepted always and in all places most noble Felix with all thankfulness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm about to get sick just listening to the guy in the scriptures. Now, God didn't put anything in here by accident, did he? Don't you think he wanted us to know that we'd be dealing with these kind of snake oil guys? Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. I mean, I know God can save anybody. Oh, yeah. Pastor, just forget it. You're going to get in trouble. Yeah. I love God uses and loves lawyers too. There's never a good thing. Just, I, I'm not picking on lawyers, just ones that are corrupt. Oh, Lord help me. I didn't mean that that way either. Let's move on. Before I, number four. Oh, my goodness. Where's this coming from? Number four. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to read, please? Brother George. <laughs> so not be weary you any further, I beg you to grant us by your kindness. <laughs> yeah. Where we have found a man of real past. Yeah. Yeah. Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. I mean, and it's just as Brother George put it really well. Another version says, But that I would weary you not any longer, I beseech you to hear us briefly in your graciousness. I mean, I just want to vomit. <laughs> and Paul is sitting here as a man of God. All those things he wrote us about turning the other cheek and loving your brother. And he's already put them into practice before he ever puts them in Scripture. Do you all see this? He was saying, Lord, I know you said we got to love them if we get to heaven. Does that include smarmy attorneys? <laughs> I believe it does. Poor <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even think about it. He just, he's not that kind of a term. The boy in the yard either, so I don't know. The boy usually watches. <laughs> Number five, moving along. Well, we have found this man, a pestilent fellow, and a mover of position among all the Jews throughout the world, 
and a ring leader of the of the sect Nazareth. Of the Nazarenes. Yeah. So they're telling him, we found this man, a pestilent fellow, a mover of sedition. He goes around and stirs strife, everything where he goes, among all the Jews. And he's where all throughout all the world. He's the ringleader of all the Nazareth, which, I, you know, if you called me that, I'd be happy. I mean, I'm the ringleader of all the Nazareth. But, you know, <coughs> he's painting it on thick. I mean, is he not? And now, has Paul, has Paul interrupted him? No. Has Paul defended himself? No. Are y'all with me? Y'all getting something? And who's he dealing with? The government. Those in authority. Come on. Isn't it kind of like how we learn the leadership? Like if you just try to defend yourself and you can tie God's hands behind his back? Yeah, when it's, mm -hmm. unless it's, you know, they're doing something against the Bible and that's different. But yeah. Little, I just want to cover that because you understand that statement, but people that haven't had that course may be like, wow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, it seems to me like he, he's up in the ante, too. When I went back to seven, and originally, I mean, Paul was uh, a Pharisee, right? He was Pharisees and Sadducees, and and they said, well, you know, he's, you know, dissension arose because they were, um, you know, said nor an angel nor a spirit or the Pharisee acknowledged them all, and then they had a great uproar. But now, what he's doing is he's actually trying to say that he's committed more of a capital crime, insurrection. Oh, if I read too much, no, like, no, you're picking you're up. Saying, this man's a revolutionary. He's trying to almost cause insurrection, overthrow the government to make it a cap. In other words, the, it originally was amongst the Jews and the religious leaders. Now they're trying to make it a civil crime. Exactly. That, that's punishable by their courts. Yeah, by their own courts. I don't know if <coughs> insurrection is a capital case. Yeah, they're uh, something that they have to deal with. And, and how many times... Do we face this still today when you start actually stepping out in faith? And uh, how many times do you have to deal with it? Are you all with me? Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that Paul's showing us how to handle it. Because now, not, at first they, they, they lied on, on the truth and had about a partial truth in it when they first attacked him. And now they've done work that all up to just a whole bunch of baloney. And, but now they've upped up the ante of what they're wanting. They're wanting his life. Still wanting his life. And we'll get to that more in a minute. Good stuff here. Y'all starting to say good stuff. Number six. Leave it up to the lawyers and bring it out. Six. I got the look. Who wants to read six? Sister did. He even tried to profane the temple and we seized him and wanted to judge him according to our law. Now wait a minute. That's a serious charge that he wanted to profane the temple. Is it not? Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's totally false. They're trying to say that he was trying to bring uh, Greeks into the sacred place, which he never did just because he was ministering to them. So now they're, now they're making a very serious accusation against him. And then, then they went ahead and made another false statement here that's very much for us to pick up on. They said, we would have judged him according to our law. They had no plans on judging him. <laughs> Their plans is on killing him, remember? Mm -hmm. Now, that's important to note for some other reasons we're going to come back to. But in a practical sense, how many times do we have somebody else that they'll be sitting there and you're like, your whole thing was to destroy me. And now you're telling me that if you had just been left alone, you would have took care of it and been all fair about it and everything would have been decently in order. And you just want to scream and go, you want to hurt? <laughs> but how did Paul handle it? Same thing. Yeah, he already knew who his, who his attorney was, didn't he? <coughs> All right, verse 7. Who wants to read? Sister Rebecca. <coughs> Commander Lysias came and with great violence took him out of our hands. Yeah, so they're saying, with great violence. Here, here's this, this lawyer again. He's putting it on thick. 
we would have done everything right, but then your captain came along and he, he just beat up all of us and grabbed him up out of our hands and we weren't doing nothing but having a discussion and we were going to judge him right because he had done these great sins against us. What is Satan? A liar. A liar. And what else is he? Destroyer. And the accuser no. of the brethren. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's changed any? No. no. Does anybody get any revelation tonight? Mm -hmm. There's a somebody. Well, somebody's gonna be facing some court things, and they're gonna remember all these verses, and it's gonna minister to them. But anyways. <laughs> Moving along. Who what's the next verse? Eight. Who wants to read eight? Go ahead, Sean. Commanding his accusers um, to call into me by examining of whom I self made to take knowledge of all these things, wherefore we accuse him. What in the world did that say? Anybody? I know. So is it mine? Yeah. Verse 7 was not was missing from your Bible? Yeah. That's why I'm going to read the King James. It was good enough for Peter. It's good enough for me. He just goes right from 6 to 7. Yeah, they take, but on the phone, it's... In case someone was kidding, but didn't catch it. But actually, they take it out of most of them. They do that a lot. And that's why I have to be careful about the translations. I do study from and read. Wow. Well, I read all of them, but I only have... <coughs> yeah. Number 7 is omitted in most. Yes, ma'am. What does what does eight mean? Yeah, what does eight mean? That's what I. Was. Um, they told us to bring him to you so you could decide, basically. Do you all agree on that? Mm -hmm. I agree with that, but I also believe because they took five days, they were hoping that they that with him staying in the prison or the place there, that they would be able to see so that they could agree with them which it was backfiring. Yeah. I agree with all that. Good stuff. Y'all are starting to dig. Yay! Verse 9. Who wants to read? Oh, Josh. <laughs> then you <coughs> Saying that these things were so. All right. Now the whole time we've had, I'll try to be. We've had the lawyer presenting the untruth, and now the Jews are jumping in, saying, "It's true! It's true! He did all these things!" Screaming at him. You're at work. Your boss has just accused you of all these things, laying it out in front of everybody, and now all your coworkers are jumping in behind him. What are you gonna do? I'm making it very practical tonight. Is that all right? We'll look at the other side of it in a little bit. Is everybody good with this? The Word of God is always for edification, exhortation. That's what we're doing. Amen? Amen. All right, Rach. Number 10. Then Paul, after the, the governor had beckoned them to... Wait, stop right, let's wait right there. Now, Paul, after what? The governor after the authority there, motion for him. Amen? Amen. Because Paul knew something about staying under authority. <coughs> Y'all seeing this? Go ahead, Rich. Second them to him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been as many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. Okay, now what... Was Paul blowing smoke? <laughs> what was he doing? Well, he was respectful. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody agree he was just being respectful? What's it? I said honoring the office. Yeah. Honoring the office. <laughs> he was. He was honoring the office. What did he mention? Did he mention flowery things? What did he address to? The office. Are you all with me? That's important. 
makes a declarative statement that I'm, you know, you've done this for a long time, you've been here, and I'm, I cheerfully, under my own will, go under step under your authority with confidence. Yeah. Ain't that good? Mm -hmm. After he's just been assaulted, this guy's twisted all the truth about him. He just says, hey. It's like he didn't even hear what they had to say. He just says, I know God, and your heart is as his hands, and I respect the office you have, and I'm trusting God to do what he said. Oh, ain't that good? Now, I think I've shared this a time or two before. And I wouldn't suggest ever doing this. I was a young believer the time I did this, but uh, I had a boss that was doing me all this way, and he informed to tell me how he was going to fire me and do all these things. And I didn't know the boss was over him, and I was submitted to this man. And he went on to tell me he was going to do all that, and and he said, "Aren't you scared? Aren't you worried about it?" And he, he they tried to get me fired. I mean, they so much as I think I've told you all this. We worked in a place with hard hats and coats, and he had to go in through this like a car wash to get the hazmat stuff off. And they so you had to leave your stuff outside. And they'd taken all my things and got a guy about my size to wear my respirator and hard hat and jacket. And took it pictures of him sleeping, posing to sleep, and sent him up on the hill to all the bosses were at. And the same boss was over it all. And they just kept on. And, and he was finally, he was like, aren't you scared? I'm going to, because I'm going to fire you. I'm going to get you. And I, I said, I said, and I was very, listen, I, I'm telling you, I was naive. I, I, I said, you can't fire me. And he said, what? I said, well, all authority is from God. And the only way you can fire me if God lets you. And uh, so you have a you have a blessed night, brother. And I turned around and walked off and went back to work. And he never did fire me. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but do you know it was the truth? Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't had that, if I hadn't found that in the truth of God... The enemy would have tormented me and rolled me crazy there. That was his purpose. Are you all with me? Now, I did have to be a good steward. I had to work as according unto God, as God said. And the Bible said I couldn't give him anything to make an accusation against me. Right. And I didn't give him any place to make an accusation. Yes, sir. I, I mean, doesn't Paul say to really what he says? He what he says he's on trial for is the hope of the resurrection of the dead well we're going to get to that it's important because he addresses but only after he's talked but uh we just wrapping up with that oh it's already 8 24. see brother mike you see why it takes us forever to get through acts <laughs> verse 11. because the doctor has to understand that there are yet for 12 days since i went up Oh my goodness. <laughs> he says, I was only there 12 days and I tore up the whole world and I've been doing, I did all this stuff in 12 days. Now, what did he do? He told them, he said, said the truth. When you're asked, just tell them the truth in every little detail and trust God to take care of it. Are y'all with me? Don't try to figure out a way to make it look better or worse or this or that. Trust the Bible says you know the, know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The truth sets things free. Just speak the truth. Amen. Amen. We'll go a little bit further. Number 12. Who wants to read? Sister Deb. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone nor exciting the crowd either in the synagogue or in the city. Now what's he doing? Telling the truth. Mm -hmm. He just said, listen, they're just that's a bunch of hot air. Now, what if he had gotten to his flesh? How would he would have he responded? Disrespectful. Very true. Anybody else? Liar. 
Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> because what the enemy wants to try to do is when he's when this is a spiritual thing that happens, this is a spiritual battle, he wants to suck you in so that you respond point for point to his accusations. You don't respond point to point to the enemy's accusations. I tell you you're going to get some good stuff. <laughs> Come on, are you with me? You just tell the truth. You don't listen to his accusations. You just tell the truth. The truth cancels it all out. And even if it don't go the way you're supposed to, like Paul could have thought when he got done here. I know we're not there yet. It didn't go the way some people would have thought. But God was still working His plan. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Y'all want to do a couple more tonight? I got you. All right. 13. Who wants to read? Sister Sean. Neither can they prove the things where... Uh... Where are they now accusing me? What? Now, was he being ugly? No. <coughs> they just, he, he really, he just really laid it in their court, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he just said, they can't even prove what they've accused of me. Just, just pretty much saying, I'm not even going to address it. Just make them try to prove it. I'm not even going to go there. Just make them prove it. You know, we got some of our, our things in our legal system, actually, for some men that you studied the Word of God. Actually, we got all of our things from men that studied the Word of God. And, you know, innocent until proven guilty. You got to have enough reasonable doubt. You got to prove the other person. Are you getting some Are you seeing what I'm saying? It's that way in the spiritual courts and that's way in the earthly courts. So that's a whole other message teaching. But anyways, good stuff. Verse 14, Sister Rebecca. But then I confess <clears throat> to you that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Amen. And King James says, I worship after way which they call heresy. He says, so he actually confessed that he did something. What did he confess to? Worship. Okay. So he hasn't... We'll go on and read verse 15. We'll tie it together. Who wants to read now? Sister Dale. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. So now, he's stating what he's been preaching. He's stating what he's been doing. He's telling them the truth, but not only is he telling them the truth, now he's starting to give them the truth. <coughs> Are you all with me? <coughs> verse 16 and I don't want to just slide over these verses you know, somebody say slide over and pass your way and got through <laughs> but there's so much meat here you know and have hope toward God which they themselves also allow that shall be a resurrection of the dead both the just and the unjust we could dive into this one verse and spend a month here to be honest with you are y'all with me? But I will move on for tonight because God's rolling us another way. 16. Who wants to read? Brother George. In view of this, I also do my best to maintain always a blameless conscience before God and before men. There it is, brothers and sisters. There's the key. If you do your very... Now, he said, and herein I do accept myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards me. If we'll do our best to keep a conscience that we know we haven't offended men or offended God, then we can always trust Him to fight our battles, be our lawyer, and take care of everything, no matter if it's in the natural or in the supernatural. Are you all with me? Now, I realize the enemy brings things. They seem very real. There's all kinds of things he does. But I just know this. When I get that peace in my heart and I trust on that, then I really know he's going to do what he said he's going to do. The hardest part 
is, is examining, the Bible says we judge ourselves, we won't be judged, is examining my heart to make sure that I do have a clear conscience with God and man, and repenting and making it right. And that may, may take going back to someone and saying, hey, you know what? I didn't do that right. Will you forgive me? I'm going to do my best here. And then, if anything else comes of it, guess what you have? An assurance from God that He's going to fight for you and take care of you. Oh, that's some good teaching, Pastor. Amen. I gotta stop saying that. It sounds arrogant. I don't mean it. I'm just it's a, for me it's a hillbilly saying from where I come from, it's a statement of agreement. Are you all with me? That's what I mean when I say that. That's a good preach. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they, they ask. So we're gonna We're gonna stop there for tonight. It's eight thirty one. And uh, we'll go into more of his defense, but do y'all do y'all see that you're always going to deal with these things in this world? But if you'll keep that conscience clear, and if you'll do right when you have it, you can always trust God to take care of you, even if they send a lawyer that's not a good lawyer around. Amen. Because there is good lawyers. The Bible says that Jesus is our lawyer. Nice say, Pastor. Amen. I love y'all. Any any prayer requests before we leave tonight?